Okay, and uh, I guess my next topic, the question I want to veer into, and it's kind of going back to it, but, but I think it goes off of your, your, you know, being in the medical profession. How has human genetic studies evolved over the years to get us to this point? So human genetics, um, I guess you could say it, it traces its origin mm -hmm. uh, now 150 years um, to the time of Mendel when um, of course, he wasn't working in humans, he was working with pea plants, but he, mm -hmm. he identified the properties of genetic inheritance or the patterns of inheritance that have not only held true in plants, but apply really um, to uh, all animals and, of course, also to humans. And it became recognized, you know, probably at this point, it would be at the beginning of the 20th century that there are indeed human traits that seem to behave um, according to these rules of inheritance. But, you know, from that point, let's say from the early 1900s to about mid-century, um, really had no idea how it worked. We, we knew we could describe patterns of inheritance pretty well. You know, we could say, for example, um, that if a, a child has sickle cell anemia, that's a recessive, it requires that both parents be carriers. They won't show signs of the condition themselves, but there's a one in four chance that they would each pass the copy of the, the globin gene that carries the genetic variation uh, to a child. So one in four of their children will be affected. That we knew. Um, but until about mid-century, last century, we didn't really understand how that worked. When DNA was discovered to be the genetic material, and then not too long after the basic structure of DNA was defined um, by Watson and Crick, um, that generated um, a flurry of research that brought us into, into the cell and to understanding the basic mechanisms by which um, genes actually exert their effect. And so it could become um, known then that, for example, um, the sickle cell mutation actually alters the structure of one of the components of the hemoglobin molecule, and that causes the red blood cells to assume the sickle shape, which causes them to get stuck in, in blood vessels, and that's what leads to the many complications of that condition. So over the course of, I'd say, time from mid um, 20th century, right to the end of the 20th century, um, there was really a kind of renaissance of um, research, understanding how genes behave in cells. And that culminated in the completion of the Human Genome Project, which was an international project um, aimed to deciphering the genetic code and to um, being able to um, describe exactly what the different genes are. And of course, that, that was a huge landmark and provides tools that I can tell you when I started, um, I don't think I could have dreamt of, but it's only the beginning really, because um, when you have the entire genetic code before you, there's still a great deal of work that has to be done to figure out how those genes work, what turns them on or off at particular times, how do they interact with one another and with the environment, which are the ones that are important to health, and in what way is that kind of influence exerted, and does it suggest underlying mechanisms of disease we would previously not have, have even guessed at that then permit us to develop new treatments. So you know, genetics research has moved over a period of um, you know, 150 plus years from observation and description to understanding mechanism. And, you know, that's the point that we're at right now. Do you know what's happening in Birmingham? Download the What's Happening Birmingham app today on Android, iPhone, and iPad for free. Get info on everything you need to know about local news, events, businesses, restaurants, and more. Visit our website, whatshappeningbham.com, or follow us on social media at Happening Beham for more information. Download the What's Happening Birmingham app today, your source for everything Birmingham.